I am the Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. OMG, this foundation, I am over it. This is my prelude. This is my intro. I usually don't do intros because I think they're, I don't know, kind of silly. Like, if you want to see this, which it's already in my title, wait, and I'm going to talk for three minutes before I get there. For this foundation, I need to talk for three minutes before we get there. I hope not three minutes. I tried this on initially. I posted what happened. This time here, I think I am trying it three or four more times. That's insane. One of the times it took me 10 minutes to put on the foundation. That's nuts. I am looking around. I haven't watched a lot of reviews, but I've looked at several and people are in love with it. And I'm not getting it. I'm not having that same experience, which is strange. It really makes me question if I'm crazy, which is always possible. But I think more than likely, I think people are so enamored of Pat McGrath that they're giving it a good review, even though it's not that good. I came to an interesting conclusion I haven't seen anyone else talk about. This was a blurry, shmurry mess. And MAC Face and Body, when you first try putting that on, it's a blurry, shmurry mess. I remember Lisa Eldridge once explained it as it, it, it's something that you move around and move around and it doesn't really seem to do anything and you wonder if it's going to work and all of a sudden, boom, it sets up and it's like magic. This is kind of like that, except I didn't really get to the magic period, but it was blurry and smurry and weird, and it made me think of MAC Face and Body. So I looked at the ingredients, and they share an ingredient. It's number two in Pat McGrath, and it is called, oh, just, you're going to love this, Cyclopenta siloxane, Cyclo, cyclo, cyclopenta siloxane. I'm going to stick with that. I'll put it down below. When I look this ingredient up, it's a dimethicone, silicone, you know, calciprese, but somebody had said, and I can't find that definition now, um, that it can be a, a waterproofing kind of agent in skin care. And MAC Face and Body, of course, was produced with the idea that it could be used on stage, that you can wear on your legs, on your arms, and it's not going to just rub off on your clothes and stain everything. Thusly, MAC Face and Body. And MAC, when it first came out, touted itself as professional makeup. I don't know if it actually was, but that's what they said they were. Um, these two foundations share that ingredient, and I have a feeling that's what brings the long wearedness to the Pat McGrath, and that's what also brings this smeary, merry situation to the Pat McGrath, which means Pat McGrath is the next MAC Face and Body, except for the MAC Face and Body is less expensive. I also want to talk about the price. This is uh, 1.18 fluid ounces, which is 0.18 more than most foundation. Fluid ounces is not weight, but volume. So you are getting more in volume with the Pat McGrath. And you need considerably less. For instance, I got these little... Where are my samples? Okay, these are little sample things from Sephora. I got easily four applications of the Pat McGrath from this. I also got a Bobbi Brown foundation, her longwear foundation. I got one application because it is thick and doesn't really move around all that much. So if you love this foundation, it might not be as expensive as you think it is. You might actually get more wears for this bottle than you would for another bottle of uh, one fluid ounce. So that's something to consider if you happen to love this. Do I love it? Well, stay tuned to find out. So I'm going to go for the 8 today and dot that on. You kind of work in little sectors and see what happens. So there's the cheek. It's very sheer coverage with the brush. 
Mm. Try the forehead. And as I went over the other day, this is a thin foundation. Um, and it wasn't really setting. Like it kept on moving with my fingers. It was kind of smearing. I'm going to build towards the center of my face where I have the most darkness and skin damage. Instead of sweeping, I'm going to try pushing this in. And yesterday I didn't really get it under my eyes, so I'm going to try that today. It is absolutely not behaving smeary like it did with my fingers, so that is a good thing. Let's try something here. Let's go into the Zuiva, which is kind of like a small kabuki. It's just as dense, but you can really get in to areas. All right, so. It is on. It looks a little different than it looked on my skin yesterday, but I did apply it differently. I used the Kabuki, and then I used the Soeva, which is kind of a mini Kabuki. It has a different shape, but it's just as dense and it's smaller to just get into this area. And I use this because Pat McGrath is releasing a brush to go with her foundation, and she's doing a powder brush as well. Um, but I'm not going to buy that. So what matters is the application. I'm doing a second try on this to see if it's better than the fingers. And I will say it is not smeary like the fingers were. So as I did yesterday, I am going to... It still feels tacky to me just as it did yesterday. But I want to let this set up for a good 20 minutes before I powder it. And then I'll come back with my makeup on and we'll take another look. I'm back. It's 10.30. I let this set up for a good while. Then I powdered it down, went in with bronzer, and did not have the same problem I had yesterday because I did powder over here. So I personally have found if you don't powder this, you're going to have some skipping issues. But I watched Jamie Page today, and she powdered one side of her face and didn't powder the other side of her face and she didn't have a problem with her blushes or her bronzer. She said the product she put on on top went on well. I'm just not having the same experience so your mileage may vary. But this is it. It's 10.30 and it still it looks amazing. The things that remained the same were the tackiness. I didn't have the blurring issue using the Kabuki brush and going in with the smaller Zoeva brush for the uh, smaller areas around the nose and the eyes work very nicely. And I didn't have the usual experience I have where I use a kabuki and the kabuki kind of takes off the foundation at the higher points. Oh, there's a hummingbird in the backyard. Uh, and I guess he noticed I looked at him and he just took off. Um, so I didn't notice that the kabuki was rubbing it off, but I didn't use the kabuki in the more traditional ways. You could see I was patting it a lot instead of rubbing it. And um, yeah, I, I like the way the look is. I think the look is pretty similar to yesterday's look, but the application was a lot nicer with this brush. I'm back for the 4.30 check-in. So it's pretty hot. Um, I did just come back from running some errands and a little sweaty was I, um, but the foundation is holding up really beautifully. I like it. I think it looks very skin-like and very fresh. It doesn't look too makeup-y. There's nothing heavy about it. This is medium coverage at best. All right, so that's it for today. We're going to do it one more time with the fingers and signing out for now. Boop.
So now the finger application as directed, shade number eight, and I kind of work in areas. Pat this on with your fingertips. I'm getting the smearing stuff. I did put on my sunscreen more than a half an hour ago, so it should be as absorbed if it's, as it's going to be. It is a little emollient. We could be here for a long, long time, even if this gives me a good effect. This is not an expedient way to put on your foundation. It seems to be working a little bit better on the forehead, maybe because I used less product. But it's still moving around. I don't know if you can see, like right up here. Oh my God, this is going to take an eon. Oh my God. Uh, not expedient. I'm really, I'm resting my elbow on the table because this is an exhausting way to put on your foundation. So first I kind of spread it around. And it smears all over the place. I don't know. Can you see that? I've never had a foundation do that. I think, I feel like it's was too much product, so it was too hard to blend in, and you need to use less, and we'll probably have to layer more. Maybe that's the answer. So it, it looks blended, but it took a lot of work to get there. This isn't just like put it on and it kind of does it itself. I have foundations that I feel are kind of self-leveling. Like I will just put on both hands, mirror all over the place, and then I think, okay, now I'll go in to blend out, and I look around with my magnifying uh, mirror, and it's like blended itself, it's fine. This is not that experience. Um, as far as quickness goes, the brush a thousand times quicker. I'm gonna let it set up for about 10 minutes, I guess, not forever, and then go in with another layer. I'm back and the makeup is on. It's the same makeup I did yesterday, so you might recognize it. And I liked it so much, I did a tutorial on it. Uh, so take a look for that. I am not in love. First of all, the skin looks great. There's no doubt that the skin doesn't look great in person. On camera, I think it looks fine, but in person, there's something really special about it. But when I put on my glasses and look at a mirror that's even larger than this one, I do see that it's kind of sinking into my um, 11s here, which I'm not a big fan of. It's probably something you can't see to the naked eye. And around the mouth where I have some lines going on a little bit, again, probably not to the naked eye, but I didn't notice this yesterday when I used a brush. And I didn't notice it the first day either. This is going to be the most thorough testing you have seen on this foundation, and that's for sure. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Back again for yet another test. I think this is four, and I have two other brushes I want to use. The goal today is to do it fast. I've seen other people do this fast, and I don't know why it's taking me so long to work this in. I've used a less emollient moisturizer and a less emollient sunscreen today. The skin still feels soft, but we're gonna try. Boom, 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 boom. Making the noises is very important. And I'm going to go in with a stippling on this side. 
Oh, this is nice. Oh. Okay. Mission accomplished. I think my kabuki was just too dense. So it was really hard to get it going. But this... Nice. I was thinking this yesterday, actually, when I was applying my makeup, but when I, I think I'm probably going to fast forward through that because truly it took me an eon to put on the foundation yesterday. I'm going to try, even though I'm having success with this, I'm going to try this other brush on the other side because that's what we're here for. We're here to test. Again, making the noise, boom, 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 extraordinarily effective. <laughs> little weirdness on the chin. I think I like the stippling brush better. And build up on the cheeks. All right, this is a thousand times better. Um, it's still tacky, that's not going to change. And I'm gonna let it set up. For a little bit, then I'll powder it, do the rest of my makeup, come back, and maybe come back later on to see how it wore. It is 9.15 in the morning. I will be back. I'm back. It's about 6 o'clock at night, so this has been on for 9 hours. It's a warm day. I did take a nap. And my blush has gone away, but blush kind of goes away on me pretty easily. And I did use a very, very light hand. Um, it hasn't broken up. There, the only odd thing that's going on is right in my 11s area. Earlier, I noticed, wait, was that today. yesterday? I think it was today. I noticed in my 11s when I used both my glasses and a magnifying mirror that magnifies a lot, that there was some settling in my 11s. Now, I don't see a settling, but there's a little breaking up that's odd, but I did use a different powder today. I did this by Terry powder and then it didn't mattify me quite enough and I wasn't enjoying the shine today for some reason so I, then I went in with the Laura Mercier later so I might have over powdered just a little bit um, but that's that's about it that's my only observation by far this is the best application the stippling brush I'm I'm this this foundation has just it, it's melted my brain <laughs> I'm done <laughs> I hope this was helpful to you. I've gone through it so you don't have to. I'm back for a little, what do you call it? Forward, pre-forward. This foundation has fried my brain. You know, the word for after something has concluded. Can't remember. I didn't intend on coming back. Today I was sitting down to do my makeup and I had a little bit left of the Pat McGrath number 8. I was surprised because I'd already gotten at least two or three applications off of it. I thought, you know what, I may as well put that on. I dabbed some on with my fingers and then I just smeared all over the place, which is my preferred way of putting on the foundation, reminding you that Pat McGrath says to pat it on your face, which took me 12 minutes. I smeared it on. I got a sliver of coverage. I put a little bit more on the cheeks and I used the um, stippling brush which left marks all over the place and after it left marks all over the place I just patted everything and I'm done. I, I'm not going to build anymore. I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just going to powder my face because it's still sticky and I put this on it's 10 o'clock. I put this on maybe 40 minutes ago I'm just going to powder up to take down the shine and also to stop 
the stickiness. And that's it. Oh, you can tell I've been wearing glasses since I put it on. Uh, yeah, that's not pretty. Here are my conclusions. I don't think a person should have to work so hard to find a way to apply foundation. I think you shouldn't have to work so hard to decide if you like it or not. You know, it looks okay in this light, it doesn't look good on this light, but oh, it looks great after four hours, but it doesn't look great after I just put it on. It looks fine after I powder it, but before I powder it, it kind of looks a little waxy. We shouldn't have to do that. When we're doing that, it's like dating a man who we really, really want to like, but there's so many checks against them. This foundation is like that. I feel, I found myself trying so hard to like it. It mattered too much that it was from, you know, Pat McGrath. Whoa! So angels must be singing. Maybe Pat McGrath missed. If I didn't know the name of this foundation, I'd be like, what's going on here? And that's my truth. Um, I have the same kind of thing with Charlotte Tilbury products. Like, I really want to like them. But most of her products I don't like. And I, I've kind of accepted that. It took me a long time. The powder's amazing. So that's my conclusion. I don't think you should work so hard to try to like something. Sometimes it looks great. Sometimes it doesn't. The application is very, very tricky. And I still kind of, uh, truly, I worked so hard to find something to work on this and things I didn't even shoot. I'm kind of over it. I kind of resent it. There are other foundations coming out. Fenty has one that's coming out. Charlotte Tilbury has another one. I'm going to give it a try, though. Um, I'm sure it's magical <laughs> because, you know, everything is magic with her. Um, let's see, Charlotte Tilbury has one, Fenty has one, Anastasia has one, Urban Decay has one. There is not a dearth of foundations coming up. And I'm going to get my little greedy hands on them and try them. This one for me, eh. If after I try those, I still am yearning for it, you know, I will listen to that pull inside going, ah, oh, you know, but didn't, didn't that Pat McGrath really work after you powdered it? Do you know what I mean? Listen to that inner voice. Let your intuition guide you. Right now my intuition is saying you shouldn't have to work that hard. And that's my conclusion. So now I am finally gone. I'm sorry for the very long video. I really hope it was helpful to you. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.